Hello, welcome to New Orleans Good Good. Uh, my name is Deborah Cotton and I want to introduce you to one of my favorite home cook superstars, Jeffrey Trepania. Hello. Hello. Uh, Jeff is an amazing cook and um, this feature today I want to discuss um, just a little bit about who you are and how you came to be the incredible cook that you are. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, thanks for all the comments and the accolade, accolades and so, so forth and so on. Um, I got into cooking basically because I, I moved out of town for a while and uh, I missed everything here. You know, was this during the store? During my radio years, back okay. in the early 80s. Uh-huh. You know, during radio for who? I was working for WOKJJMI in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh -huh. Before that, a lot of the local stations. And then after Local that, here in New local Orleans? Local stations here in New Orleans. Uh -huh. Spent 30 years in radio broadcasting. Uh-huh. Any and of I, the radio stations that I would recognize? Of course. Old school. Uh-huh. It's my last station. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you know, I remember that, out, yeah. About seven, eight years ago, I, uh -huh. I got out of radio. Yeah, you were doing and, that one. Uh, right. decided to do something different. Mm-hmm. You know, um... So you were out of town. I was out of town, and everything was fast food. There's a few good restaurants in, in Mississippi, of course, but, uh, you know, I'm missing home cooking. Mm -hmm. So I decided that uh, I was talking to one of my sisters, and she said, well, look, I'll send you Pots, Pan, and Pioneers 1 and 2, set of pots, and you can go in the kitchen. Pots, Pans, and so Pioneers? Pioneers 1 and 2. It was a what cookbook that? that was put together by a lot of telephone operators. Uh-huh. And it had great recipes in it. Telephone operators. Telephone That's operators. So operators. Okay. fancy that. Well, my sister was a telephone operator at the time. Oh, okay. 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 And uh, it's a good cookbook. You should mm -hmm. get it. Mm -hmm. And it's got a lot of great recipes I'll in it. I'll borrow yours. <laughs> I can't find anything after Katrina. Okay. Uh, but at any rate, uh, it's pretty funny. So anyway, I got in the kitchen and started cooking. And mm -hmm. it was for me, it was just getting directions because I kind of had the basics down from watching mom and dad. They both cooked as mm -hmm. a team all the time. So mm -hmm. it, was, it was pretty interesting to watch them work. And some of the stuff I kind of knew, but I hadn't really gotten in the kitchen and said, okay, I'm going to cook something. You know, so there I was. And, and when I had questions, I would just call home and say, hey, I, I need to know, I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Making gumbo. You're making gumbo. That's right. I'm making gumbo. Mm -hmm. This is where I am. You know? uh -huh. How do I make a roux? You know, and uh, so, so you learn by via recipe and, via and recipe, t telephone. Via telephone. And then you and took it to the next level yeah, going went to, to Delgado school. Community College for three years and, mm -hmm. you know, an apprentice chef program over there. Mm -hmm. and That's where uh, a lot of um, folks that cook locally, locally, I understand, went to school. Right, there's not a, a lot of local places school. to go. I think there's a place on St. Charles Avenue other than this one, but mm -hmm. the Delgado is probably the best thing. Unless you're going to go up north to John Fosa School, mm -hmm. which is only three or four years, maybe five years he's been in existence. Mm -hmm. but Delgado's been there quite a while. Mm -hmm. And you were there for how long? Three years. Okay. Three years, cooked around the city, worked for the Brennan's Palace Cafe on Canal Street. Remember okay, that? yeah. Uh -huh. I interned Definitely there for Palace a year Cafe. and a half, mm -hmm. worked at several stations, broiler cook, uh, as well as saute station, and mm -hmm. desserts and hot appetizers. Went down the line, mm -hmm. station to station, learned them all. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Where else did cool. you cook? Uh, I also cooked at the Fairmont Hotel, which is now the Roosevelt since it's been redone. Yes. Uh, several Fairfield country Lake. clubs, New Orleans Country Club, Metairie Country Club. Okay. Oh, God, I was all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, I spent about a year here, a year there learning different things, mm -hmm. you know, different menus, mm -hmm. uh, and then moved on. Mm -hmm. And how would you describe, like, your style of cooking now? My style of cooking? Um, it's basically Creole style cooking. I think it'll always be that. Mm -hmm. That's that's who I am. Given your that's who ethnicity, I am. Right. <laughs> exactly my ethnicity. Uh, and uh, it's basically Creole style cooking. Uh -huh. You know, uh, I can do a little Italian or, or some other type of cooking if I need to. You mm -hmm. know, it depends on where you're working. Mm -hmm. Everybody does a different thing. But when you come to New Orleans, it's basically Creole and Cajun, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. you know, or and Creole, dishes. if you had to define Creole cooking, how would you? Creole is flavor with not a lot of pepper. It, Cajun, the difference in Cajun would be Cajun is more spicier. Okay, that yeah, is right. People say I make, I say make spicy food. Mm -hmm. They say you mean hot? No, I don't mean hot. I mean a marriage of flavors where you can taste the garlic, the bell peppers, the onion. You taste all that when you eat my food. Mm -hmm. It's layers of flavor on top. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's the way I like to cook. That's the way I describe my cooking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, how would you? Okay, so how do you define Creole? Your Creole identity as your culture. Oh wow. Uh, I don't think about that very often. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a mix going on. You know, uh, there's a little. I mean, bit you grew up. You grew up in the Seventh Ward, the traditional. Seventh Ward, tradition Seventh Ward, okay. good place to grow up in. Uh -huh. you know, uh, it was a lot of fun. There was always food, whether it be a christening and there's donuts and cocoa to, you know, uh, uh, birthday parties and uh, crab boils and, mm -hmm. and all that type of stuff. You mm -hmm. know, we did the whole gamut. Mm -hmm. 
Uh-huh. You know, there was always something going on growing up. It was not like today, you know. People had more time to spend with one another back then. Mm -hmm. You know, families would get together more. Nowadays, everybody's busy mm -hmm. doing this and doing that. Mm -hmm. you know? And they don't take time to really slow down and enjoy life because we got so much to offer here. Mm -hmm. you look around you. Mm -hmm. You know, free crabs, free free fish, you name it. It's all out there. It's right behind you. If you're fishing, it's if free. If you're fishing. <laughs> well, you know, you can play with it. Or it's get cheap it right. if you, I guess, if you go shopping for it, cheaper than... Yeah, if you're upstairs making some gumbo elsewhere. and you say, I need some crabs, I can come downstairs and get my crabs and make, and make my gumbo. I'm you definitely can. You're out here in the midst of it. I've got to trap a little bait in a little bit just to show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. Just to get some crabs going around here. All right. You know, but living on the water, even if you don't live on the water, you live in Louisiana, you, you know, you have access to so much really, really good seafood. Mm -hmm. I mean, even after what happened with BP, we still got the best seafood, the best tasting seafood mm -hmm. on the planet. Mm -hmm. There's no question about it. Mm -hmm. You know, so we can make a lot of fresh dishes and eat better. You did know, you grow up important. fishing? Uh, did you grow up crabbing? Like, how did you learn? Crabbing was one of the things that my dad and I did. I really didn't know fishing. I went fishing once when I was maybe about 10 years old. I caught uh -huh. a perch about that big and made him breakfast. Uh -huh. That was all I caught. <laughs> so I never really got into the fishing thing back then. Mm -hmm. you know, now I can get into it a little bit more. You know, but you'd go crabbing with your father? Crabbing with my father. We had a little flat boat. We had the nets and we put them down. And where would you go? With the turkey necks. We used to go behind Mishu. Uh -huh. On Mishu Boulevard. Uh -huh. Back out that way. Uh -huh. It's all blocked off now. But We'd go back that way. You had a boat. We'd come back with a hamper of crabs, easy. Uh -huh. So we'd have a boil and have somebody over and just have a party. Uh -huh. And then we add all the fixings, you know, do corn and potatoes and sausages and all that. And then when you finish it, you have a complete meal. Mm -hmm. And most of it, just some of your time. That's all you spent was time. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Nice, yeah. nice. Where, yeah. where in the, where did you grow up? What neighborhood? I grew up in the seventh ward. I grew mm -hmm. up on St. Anthony Street. St. Anthony. Virgin Wine Law. Okay. What school did you go to? Back around Epiphany Church. I went to Valina C. Jones okay. Elementary School, uh -huh. Rivers Frederick High School. Then uh -huh. I went to Bell and Clark. Yeah. Okay. I did the New That's Orleans sixth thing ward. for that area. Bell right. was in the sixth ward. Right. Yeah, but, uh -huh. you know, where St. Aug get most of their, their musicians from, right? That's Andrew J. Bell. Right here. <laughs> band, went to St. Uh -huh. Yeah, we always had a great band. Uh-huh. So, uh-huh. You know, and, cool. um, but you kind of gravitated more towards communications, right, radio, right. No. and then cooking. Exactly, exactly. You know, I um, I went in the military for a few years in the Navy, and I came out and. Were uh, you cooking there at all? No, not at all. Mm -hmm. Not at all in the Navy. You know, I was stationed in an aircraft carrier. They did most of the cooking. Uh huh. It wasn't very good, but I'm they sure. did it anyway. You know, so uh, we ate out a lot. You know, when we could, we went on the water. We would eat out somewhere mm -hmm. uh, because the cooking was just, you know. It was just okay. Right. You know, and when you come from Louisiana where the culture and the food is so rich, it's kind of hard to live off that type of, you know, environment. So mm -hmm. we'd go find out, well, okay, what's in this state, what's in that state. Or if we went overseas, we'd find some places to eat, mm -hmm. try some different stuff. Mm -hmm. you know, um, so how often do you, would you say you cook a week or, you know, do you cook all of your meals? Do you go out half the time? Actually, on average, I cook about three times a week. Okay. That's about it. And what are some of, like, your... your you know, favorite meals to cook, or the gumbo. ones that you cook the most. I've always been hooked on gumbo. That really? was my favorite. You know, uh -huh. I went to school, so the main thing I wanted to learn was how Through the I year, make you good, make gumbo. Through the year, how do I make a good gumbo? Anytime I feel like it, I make it. Mm -hmm. you know, and what, uh, what's your gumbo is like? Is my gumbo is like, uh, you know, they're usually filet and okra gumbos. Uh -huh. You know, I like to combine them. Mm -hmm. And it makes a huge difference because the okra just gives it an incredible taste to it. And I like to put a lot of crab meat and crabs in it. The sausage. Okra's kind of controversial, isn't it? Yeah, it can you know, be. Yeah. Yeah. You put it, some don't sister, like, hate it, some like, don't. No, okra is okra, <laughs> should be cooked this way. And filet right. is this, and I just don't mix them. Uh -huh. It's like, okay, cool, no uh -huh. problem. But if you eat my gumbo, you're going to find some okra in it. Uh -huh. You know, it's something I picked up a while back, and to me, it, it just adds an incredible flavor, mm -hmm. you know, to the gumbo. Uh -huh. I mean, I can then you have seafood and... Sausage. Seafood and sausages, chicken. Chicken. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and of course crabs and shrimp. Uh huh. You know, all local. Uh huh. Uh, all fresh. Mm hmm. You okay. Know, so you got a great meal. So you got your gumbo and what are your. Jambalaya etouffee. I'm so New Orleans. You know, what can I tell <laughs> so, you? So, so New Orleans. New Orleans, <laughs> I'm eating it. Uh huh. I'm eating it, you uh -huh. Know, so. But you make I'm a lot of jambalaya. You make a lot of. Jambalaya. I make etouffee from time to time. Uh huh. Depends on how I feel. Mm -hmm. You know, you cook whatever I feel like making that feel like eating that's what I cook uh -huh. you know that's the way I roll and then what, what are some of the other your kind of favorite local places to eat 
Well, you know, we used to go to Willie Mays off of Orleans, uh -huh. around Galveston, back mm -hmm. in that area. Willie, Willie I used to go to Willie Mays over there. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't eat in New Orleans very often because now I'm in Slidell. Uh -huh. You know, and I haven't gotten out much in Slidell to, to some of the restaurants here just because I keep a kind of busy schedule. Uh -huh. You know, so I do most of my cooking here. Once in a while I eat out and it's usually some fast food, I have to admit. Mm -hmm. I'm in a hurry. Stop at churches or Popeyes or uh -huh. something, you know, I get something like that. Uh -huh. Or there's another place I like that does some really good... Uh, uh, roast beef sandwiches it's your, that's just up the street off. sorry about that <laughs> have to turn my phone off <laughs> uh anyway that's pretty much it mm -hmm. that's pretty much it okay yeah but louisiana's got what four thousand plus restaurants so you know we got a lot of restaurants yeah and usually the best food is they say it comes out of the hole in the walls the hole in the walls yes yeah that's yeah. Really real good food it's another is. segment that i have uh, on okay. a magazine okay <laughs> so you also have i hear a um, new cookbook that you yes i have put together and it's a labor um, of love i've been working on this forever yeah and, uh, yeah i've worked on it for quite a while and then some things happened and i uh, lost my son that type of thing and oh, uh, kind of sidetracked me from, from finishing the book. Mm -hmm. And then it was like at some point I needed a project. Mm -hmm. So I said, let's finish the book. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a lot of uh, recipes that my family has, mm -hmm. you know, family recipes. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of things that, that I do differently with some of my foods that I'll throw in there as well. Mm -hmm. you know, like what's some, what are some of the... Mac and cheese my you... way. Okay. You know, where most people use elbow macaroni. I like pina pasta. Mm -hmm. And I think it works much better. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, it tastes better too for me. Mm -hmm. you know, elbow macaroni is like so far back there. Retro. You know, it's retro, you know. <laughs> right. So, right. Uh, we try to change up a little bit. I think a lot of cooks are doing that as well. Uh -huh. You know, uh, but I use the pina pasta for that. Uh, I make an extra fit that's really interesting and uh, comes out really well. Mm -hmm. Very tasty, very rich. Uh -huh. uh, and what's the name of the book? It's going to be Holidays at the Trepanier's, Creole mm -hmm. style. Okay. You know, actually one of my sisters also contributed a recipe in there. Uh -huh. the, Which one did she do? cake, Joanne. She did a cake, uh, a pineapple cake that's mm -hmm. a, a no-bake cake. Really? It's got a lot of these great ingredients in it, pineapple and so forth and so on. Coconut, pecans, you name it. Mm. And you finish it in the refrigerator. I wanted something from at least one of the family members. You have to send me that one so I, I can, can try it. I can send you that one. You know, it's, uh, it's very exquisite. I mean, even yeah. I can't mess up a refrigerator. Well, knock wood. I can't uh, <laughs> mess up a refrigerator. You just don't want to tell us the truth. You know, we can do some cooking. A little bit. A little, a little bit. bit. A little Not bit. like you, though. Well, you got to come hang out more. I know. You know. We'll just go in the kitchen and say, okay, you know. Yeah, I mean, today, I mean, turkey next, next time, jambalaya. That's next it. time, I'm going to make for you jambalaya. I'm also going to do the crawfish monica, which we talked about. Ah, yes, yeah. the crawfish monica. So I'm going to have to do that for you. That's so good. You know, and we can do the etouffee as well. Mm -hmm. You know, those three dishes won't take as much time as when we did the turkey next, and it took a good couple hours to mm -hmm. get it done. So I can probably do two or three meals mm -hmm. of dishes and have a taste of all To those. make sure we do it during crawfish season, oh, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Best right. time. Great. Great. All right. Well, I look forward to it. I'm take take you up on take that. Take me up on it, please. <laughs> okay. All right. You know what I want to see? What's that? I, I bet everyone else would like to see. Um, how exactly you come out here and um, grab up your dinner? You okay. want to yeah, show, show me how you, how you make you this that. crab extravaganza it's happen? It's changed a bit from the days when I used to crab with my dad because we had those circular traps uh -huh. and you put the meat in the middle and you would toss them out and have on a long rope and have a rope down, right, tied down somewhere, uh -huh. and then you pull it, pull it, and the crabs would come in. Nowadays, living out here on the dock, on the water, this is the contraption we use. Now, this is the cage, see? This is where the, the meats go. So I'm going to take some of the turkey necks we had from the other day. Because mm -hmm. they love turkey necks. Hmm. Do they? They do. And these last long, too, so that's mm -hmm. the other part that's good. You mean in the water they last long? In the water, yeah. Uh-huh. And that's cooked or no, right? Uh-huh. It, you said it's cooked, yeah, so they these, don't like these, it raw? These, they no, like no, it no, cooked? No. These are cooked uh -huh. because I have them cooked, but I can, I can use them raw or cooked, and they'll still last about six or seven days. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to just lock this in right quick. Okay, so that's all ready to roll. Where do you get something yeah. like this? Well, you can buy these at some of the fishermen's type stores. Okay. Then we roll them out. Woo! Okay. And then if you come over here, I can show you where we have a couple that were caught earlier. Because we're, we're definitely trying to catch some crabs. Oh my God, where is this from? This is just like thread. Oh, I don't want to break it. Here's a couple of guys, somebody, one of them, one of them <laughs> just 
tie these guys together and they're just ah. hanging in there. Do you believe that? Oh my God, they're beautiful. That is so hilarious. Nice Are they size, tied too. up together? Yeah, they're tied together. It appears they're oh, tied Oh, that sucks. Together. Sucks yeah. for them. I'm gonna have to put them in my cage over there just to make sure they don't get away though. Aww. But they've been there like that for a while, so I'm gonna assume that they're tied up pretty well. Uh-huh, so that's uh, gonna be gumbo right there? Yeah, obviously the new guy doesn't realize that we have another holding tank. We got a holding tank like this large. Uh-huh. So what we can do is if we only got two, we can take those two, and then when this trap comes back in, if I get another 810, I'm not gonna do anything less than a dozen. This is enough for a meal. Uh -huh. I wouldn't cook, cook two. Uh -huh. And if I was doing gumbo, I'd come down and take these puppies upstairs, clean them and put them in my gumbo, then uh -huh. I got fresh crabs. Uh -huh. Doesn't get any better than that. Uh -huh. Doesn't get any better than that. Wow. Yeah. This is so beautiful out here. Yeah, it is. The marsh is pretty nice. We're starting to see the alligators again. Now is it like al alligator season? Um, it's not alligator season. It's more like in the summer. Uh -huh. You know, we're still in the spring, but uh, they, when hibernate, do they, they hibernate for the winter. Uh -huh. So the other day we saw like maybe one over here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we know that there are a few out there. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and, and there'll probably be a few more. So. Do you ever, do they ever come up to the plank here? Or? Well, let me tell you a story. We had a little, a little person that lived here for a while. And uh, pretty funny. A little famous, person? A little person, a little midget, Ryan. And oh, <laughs> okay. Ryan and David were feeding hot dogs on a fishing, a little fishing pole and tapping on the water. And the baby came over here, a baby alligator. So he's eating, he's coming close to the dock, you know, which isn't good, but he, and he would eat the hot dog. <laughs> well, one day they made some contraption and, and actually had him spinning and spinning and, and he got all tied up in it. So they took him off the dock and took a picture. You can see a midget holding a five foot alligator. It's pretty funny. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I'll say little person, I don't want to offend anybody, you know, because right. he's good. Is that guy. what he prefers, little person, little uh, people? You know, we never really got into it. Okay. I just know some people, get offended by it when you say midget. Uh -huh. This dwarf, this midget, this little person. Okay. What's actually correct, I'm not sure. I, I just don't try to insult anybody. Right, I'm right, just right. trying to, for the point, he was the little guy. Uh-huh, you know uh-huh. I mean? So at any rate, you know, yeah. And sometimes, you know, with the gators here, you know, he would go up to the third deck here, and Craig's standing down here and saying, okay, the coast is clear because the gators are out, so he can dive. And he's he throwing who? cannonballs. Ryan, the little midget, do it off the third deck. <laughs> Unbelievable, huh? <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. So, so he just goes diving out here? He just dives out here a few times. Okay. And, and, and Craig said, and, he has, and you all have like a, a gator clear, lookout gator squad here, to keep him safe. Him. Coast is clear. Go ahead and do what you got to do. You know, so he would dive in. Uh huh. You, do you, you swim out funny. here? No, I don't. Okay. No, I don't. I know because what's in there. I know what's in there. Okay. Because you yeah. don't play with gators. No, no, I don't play with gators. I'm okay. afraid of them. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Yeah, I'm afraid of them. How deep would you say this water is? You know, I'm not sure, but it's pretty neat. Uh huh. So he went, he dove, and he never hurt himself. It's not like it's like. 12 to 15 feet here, easy. I think. Okay. You wow. Know, because we've seen pretty big fish out here and turtles. Mm hmm You know, yeah. And uh, you can catch pretty much anything you want out here. You crawfish. Know, you'll see trout, not crawfish. Uh huh. You'll see crabs. You'll see trout. Uh, we just caught bass out here. There's a lot of garfish out here, and and uh, some of the drum are out here. And some of those that we've seen at least 100 pounds. Robles had one about 100 pounds. Mm -hmm. Broke the net. So he wow. got away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so, so there's a uh, lot to enjoy out here. Yeah. Well, we definitely have to make a, a time to come back out here when you got a, a cage full of crabs and. There you go. Make I don't know. Next party, you're invited. Okay. We'll definitely. Let, I'll let you know. All right. Great. Okay. Okay. Cool. Go.